On May 21, 1911, an aviation competition known as the Paris to Madrid Air Race was organized in France, featuring the participation of monoplanes. A staggering number of spectators, totaling 300,000 people, attended the competition. Initially, everything went smoothly as several participating pilots successfully took off and safely landed their planes. However, as time passed, a large number of attendees began to spill out of the enclosures and scatter across the flying field, despite the area being designated exclusively for pilots, their assistants, and race organizers. Among those who left the grandstands and entered the flying area were several members of the French government and officials of that time. Meanwhile, French pilot Louis Emil Train had taken off with his plane but attempted an immediate landing when he discovered a problem with the aircraft, rendering it difficult to fly properly. However, Train noticed a detachment of cuirassiers present to secure and organize the masses crossing the intended landing zone. In an effort to avoid them, he veered the plane in the opposite direction, only to realize that the engine had started to malfunction, preventing him from completing the maneuver. Deciding against landing, Train continued flying to bypass the cuirassiers and aimed to land beyond their position. Yet, upon passing the cuirassiers, he was startled by the presence of numerous individuals scattered throughout the intended landing area. Train did his utmost to keep the plane airborne for a few more meters, aiming to avoid hitting any of the terrified individuals. Finally, the plane crashed violently upon hitting the ground. Train and his companion emerged from the wreckage unscathed, believing they had managed to avoid colliding with the public and causing any casualties. However, they soon discovered the horrifying truth. During the crash, they had unknowingly collided with several individuals. Among the injured were French Prime Minister Ernest Monis, who lay unconscious with a broken leg, and French tycoon and aviation patron Henri de la Merth. Tragically, the collision resulted in the death of French Minister of War Henri Maurice Bretos, whose demise triggered a devastating butterfly effect on France. Minister Bretos had been a staunch advocate for changing the uniforms of French army soldiers to align with modern tactics of warfare, emphasizing the need for concealment and protection in trenches to evade artillery fire, machine guns, and sniper bullets. Bertoz proposed replacing the French military uniform, which consisted of a blue tunic and bright red pants and caps, with a new gray-green uniform that would facilitate camouflage and concealment in combat environments. However, Bertoz's political opponents vehemently opposed his proposal, arguing that the new uniform was unattractive and did not reflect French taste. They raised concerns that it might encourage French soldiers to hide and avoid engaging with the enemy, while also highlighting the similarity between the proposed uniform and the one adopted by the German Empire. Following Minister Henri Bertoza's sudden death in the plane crash on May 21, 1911, the French government abandoned the project to change the uniforms of French soldiers. Consequently, French army soldiers continued to wear the blue coat and bright red pants and caps. In a final attempt, the new Minister of War, Adolphe Messimi, reintroduced the idea of uniform change. However, he faced strong opposition and criticism from the press and several French officials, particularly Eugène Etienne, the former Minister of War and a member of the French Parliament, who declared, Never. The red trousers are France. With the outbreak of World War I in the first months of 1914, the disastrous failure of the French Army's uniforms and their incompatibility with new tactics of combat became glaringly evident, as Ministers Bertoz and Messimi had anticipated. On August 22, 1914, during the Battle of the Frontiers between the French forces and their Belgian and British allies against the German forces, France suffered a staggering loss of 27,000 soldiers marking the deadliest day in the history of the French military. The primary reason for the heavy French casualties compared to the other participating forces was attributed to the bright color of the French army soldiers' uniforms, making them easy targets for German artillery, machine guns, and snipers. The red dye used to color the French army's clothing, known as red alizarin dye, was imported from Germany. Naturally, with the outbreak of war, German exports of alizarin dye to France ceased, compelling French army officials to reconsider the idea of uniform replacement. Consequently, the bright red trousers, caps, and vivid blue tunics were replaced with blue-gray uniforms and steel helmets.